some simple tricks that you can do and set up within your Gmail account to stay organized. So I'm going to just jump into the settings. And what's really important here is your filters. That's actually what I'm going to just draw your attention to. Um, these are really important things uh, that you should keep in mind. One of the settings I always have. This is again. This is my my daughter's um, my daughter's emails. This is not mine. So as you can see, how many um, how many emails do you want to see per page? Uh, undo send. I love this feature. Thirty seconds. That means have you ever like written an email and sent it and you were like, oh no, wait, come back. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Well, or I shouldn't have. I forgot to send. Add this. So I like using the 30 second uh, 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 send undo send feature. Uh, I usually have always set to images. Okay. So this you should and you should always have your signature uh, lined up as well. Whatever your signature is. All right. So um, that's not really what I'm going to focus on right now. I really want to focus on filters. What you really want to do here is create filters for your email. That means if you have a specific email, let's say you're constantly doing business with a certain lawyer or you're constantly doing business with a certain title company or you're constantly doing business, let's say, with a service or a product like Apple. For example, all my Apple mail goes into my Apple folder. Okay, So I do like to read my Apple uh, product company emails. I do like to get those, but they all get filtered and sorted into an Apple folder. So you should have those kinds of folders. Folders, and you would create a filter to make that happen. In order to make that happen, you would also create these labels. Let me show you that. You can see that over here. I created this one. How it's? Uh, well, hold on a second. Yeah, let's discard that. Um, you can see here. I kind of was just playing around. I created, you know, um, you know, uh, motivated sellers. You can make these labels certain colors, so it's it's easy on the eyes, which is actually really important. One of the things you want to do. Um, for you know, like transactions. Let me give you an example. I'm going to add a new label, and I'm going to put um, closing. Right. So these are deals that are closing. And hold on, I got to move my screen. Okay. Uh, so these are deals that are closing. Now under closing, because it means money, I'm going to make it green. Right. Because now I know everything that is, you know, under that label is is going to be money making. Right. So then I'm going to create another label and I'm going to do sellers. Okay. So I'm going to create another label for sellers and I'm going to make this maybe a certain color like soft. Maybe I'll make it like uh, purple. Right. And uh, oh, I already have a motivated sellers anyway. So I'll show you how you can re edit and you can make this buyers. Right. So I'm just giving you some simple examples here. Buyers are blue. The important thing with color coordinating. And you can do this all across your platforms. I'm going to just show you another example in Google Drive here in just a minute on how you should color coordinate your things because your eyes and your memory, remember, we remember colors and shapes really well. Remember, one, two, three, A, B, C, square, triangle, right? As kids, we remember those things and those are really important and Google knows that very well. If you noticed everything is kind of coordinated with Google when it comes to colors and shapes. Yeah. So that's really important and your files should be color coordinated. Okay. Um, this way, you know, you don't even have to read it. You can color see it as well. So this helps in speed. This helps in speed in getting things done is that instead of reading all the time, your mind can already work faster for you through colors only. So you know that if you're going for a closing, you know it's going to be green. So you just look for the green and bam, you go to closing, right? So that's that's some important features there that you should incorporate into your life. Color coordinating your folders inside of your Gmail inbox as well as color coordinating your folders inside of your uh, Google Drive, which we're going to get to that in one second. Okay. Now I'm going to jump back to settings and I'm going to jump back to filters. Okay. I'm going to create a new filter. So I don't know if this is going to work, but it's not going to work. Okay. So let's just say apple at apple.com, right? Oops. Oops. I just did a no, no. Let's go back. Oopsie, create new filter. So if anytime I get an email, what this means is I'm setting up a filter. Anytime I get an email from Apple, right? Or if it has anything in the two, two line or in the subject line or has the words iPad Pro, okay? And doesn't have the word Windows. <laughs> I'm just, 
I'm just giving this a, a funny example. Okay, I could do size and all that. What I can do is anytime that this, any emails that come in from Apple that has the word iPad Pro, I create a filter and then I throw it into I throw it into a folder. Okay, so I will choose that label and I'm going to choose oh, new label, Apple. Okay, so now I just created a label for Apple and maybe I want to star it every time it comes in, right? Maybe I want to star all my Apple emails. I want it to go uh, to be starred. I want it to have be labeled. But here's an important thing. Skip the inbox. Listen to me carefully. Skip the inbox. This is really important. You're going to want to highlight that. The reason why is you don't want Apple's, e- I'm saying Apple, but whatever it is, Bed Bath and Beyond, you don't want that to distract you from your day. You don't want that to take up your mental space, your mental real estate. They shouldn't have control of when you check their emails. You be in control of when you check their emails. So if you're actively getting, in this case, Apple emails, if I'm getting Apple emails two times a day, I want to be the one who, um, you know, takes control of that when I see it, right? I want to be the one. Now I can have it skip the inbox, which is a must. Then maybe I don't want it start, but I want it to go to the Apple label. Okay. Maybe I want to automatically forward it. I can automatically forward it too. I could delete it. Right? Look at that. Let's just say, which doesn't make any sense because you should just unsubscribe anyway, but let's just say anytime a certain uh, a- email comes in from Bed Bath and Beyond and I just want to delete it every time. I just want to delete, delete, delete. Well, what's the point? Why not unsubscribe? Maybe some people don't, whatever it is. Or maybe it has a certain word in it. Maybe it, ha- if it has a certain title or something like that. I want it deleted, all right? So my Apple emails, I never want sent to spam. Uh, I can have a, send as a template. I can always mark it as important. I can mark it never as important. I can put it into category size. There we go. That's kind of my simple filter for right now. Boom, the filter's created. There it is. So every time I get an email from Apple, it will skip my inbox. It's going to skip it, and it's going to go right to my Apple mail. Now, that should be, where are you? What? Where is my, oh, it's right here. <laughs> I was like, where'd it go? Um, so there is my, now obviously there's nothing, but there is my Apple folder. And I'm going to make it red. Right? So there is my Apple folder. And now all the emails will skip my inbox and come to my Apple folder. Does that make sense? Do you see the power in that? I just want to make that like super clear. Do you understand the power of that and why that's so important? Is because you should be in complete control of your email. You shouldn't be, like when an email comes in, most people will what? Pick up their phone. Bing, maybe there's an alert going off, a notification. Maybe they're always checking your emails. Are you that type of person that always checks your emails? Right, so these little messages, offers, whatever it may be, are just distracting you, taking your time away. And that's not good. So that these are just some solutions. Okay. Now another thing I want to make very clear to you when you are writing emails for real estate business. Okay. Let's say you're doing it to um, Kim at Do It Now Title. Okay. Titlecompany.com. Okay. What here's what's super important in your subject line. Okay. One two three Main Street. Sanford, North Carolina. Okay, do you see what I did there? If I am emailing a title company, an attorney, a business partner, whatever it is, whenever I am emailing about a property, you always, should always start the subject line with the address in the subject line. Now, you can put other things after the address if you needed to, like new updates, or you could put, some people do this, they put the date, which I think today is 5-17-19, okay, and they're putting today's date in there, so they know it's the most recent updated one, you don't really have to do that, I've seen people do that, but you got to remember, with email, everything is stacked by date, okay, like the first one came out on this date, but some people like to do that, some people put updated, most recent, updated, or new, 
People do all different things. I don't care what else you put in the subject line, whatever works for you. But what's most important is the address. Whenever you're talking about a property, put the address in the subject line. As a real estate investor, whether you're dealing with title company, attorney, uh, property management company, um, business partner, always, whatever it is, put the address inside. Why? Why, Nathan? Why should I do that? Well, the reason why is because you are going to have to um, sift and sort through messages that way. And the easiest way to pull any email about that address, about that property instantly is you use the search bar. Oh, excuse me. Use the search bar. You plug it in and then you hit enter and then all of a sudden it will show every conversation every email about that address, okay? This is really important, especially as you build your real estate business because then you're gonna have email after email after email. I mean, you could have a thread. For example, one transaction we just closed on yesterday, we had a thread of over 50 emails. But the way you find the property in your email, one of the best ways, and one of the ways it's easier for a lot of yourself, but title companies do this and attorneys do this, uh, at least the good ones do. They use e- they use the company they use the t- address in the subject line. Okay, little hack there for you. Definitely great way to do it. Again, also combine that with your folders, and you'll be off to a really great start. Okay, now I want to jump over to Google Drive. Google Drive is a great service. Some people use um, what is it? One Cloud with Microsoft Dropbox. Whatever you're going to use is fine, but your formula should still be the same, okay? Here's what I mean. When you, I'm just going to start off with a brand new slate here, right? So I got a brand new, um, you know, a brand new uh, Google Drive account here going. Um, so what I'm just showing you here is some simple practices that you, you can follow that have really helped me. And I've also taught teams of people, acquisition managers, the same thing I'm showing you right now. Uh, I hope you follow this because it's, it's, it can be really streamlined. Like for example, I'm just thinking of one of my clients right now that we had, um, we had 60 acquisition managers, uh, in Tennessee, uh, Texas and Arizona. And so they were spread out like 20 in each office and we, they they had stuff everywhere. Like stuff was going all over the place, different platforms and all this stuff, different softwares. And we just brought everything to one solution. And actually it was Google Drive was the solution. And this is actually some of the same stuff. I mean, they, they streamlined everything. They saved so much time. Uh, it was amazing. Anyway, so that's just one example. So again, as you create your files, some people mix. Some people do mix personal and business when it comes to file sharing. So I'm actually going to show you that right now. If you're mixing the two, you should definitely separate it by folder. However, what I ideally recommend, this is what I do, is your business and personal should not be together at all. That means you should have, if you have a a Dropbox for your personal life, you should definitely have a Dropbox for your business life. Okay. Everything should be separate, and this is really important also for you know for uh, CPA purposes. Not that this involves a CPA, but also you know expenses and income and all that stuff. So keep everything separate, and it will help you streamline a lot of stuff. But if you do have everything together, then you know just try to keep it separate with you know you know with a simple uh, folder. Okay. All right. So as you as you have your folders, you're going to want to remember color coordinate it. So add a color. Where's my colors? There we go. So colors, we're gonna make it this one red. Okay. So within real estate now, I wanna add a bunch of folders. Okay. So one of the folders that gets pretty common on in especially real estate is trainings, right? People have real estate trainings, maybe conferences, notes, whatever it is. Just kind of separate that your real estate stuff from everything else. Now Again, what you're going to do, street, okay, Sanford. Okay, so what I want to show you is I just created a folder of a property address, right? You definitely want to separate every property you're working on by the address. So you throw in the address into the folder title. However, you don't just want to put that all under real estate. Let's say you're doing different styles of real estate. For example, I'm going to do all my North Carolina properties in one. Then I'm just separating by state. I'm going to do all my Azores. Oops, that's not spelled right. 
all my Azores properties here and my Uganda properties here. Okay. Now this is right here. This is a United States property. Uh, this is a North Carolina. So I'm going to drop that in there to keep it organized. Okay. Then in my North Carolina one, let's just dive in there. I'm going to do another folder of actives. Add another one closed. I'm going to add another one that's pending. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. And then uh, I also like in like I also like to do this. Contractors, contractors. Now, um, if you're dealing with like single family houses, you're dealing with a lot of contractors who are sending you documents, and they send you the rehab estimates for particular properties. There's two ways to do this. I would put the rehab estimates all within the property that you're talking about, okay? However, sometimes there's other whatever documents, whatever that you need to separate. I've always found that having a separate document uh, folder for contractors is really helpful. I don't know why. Just things come up and it, it really helps to have a contractor folder. But if you're getting rehab estimates for a certain um, property, put the rehab estimates within that property, Okay, now we're working within that property, so we're going to add also another folder, pics and videos. Okay, we're going to have contracts. All right, and then we're going to have, um, okay, contracts. Okay, and then we're going to have... Um, What I, I do like to do this. Where is it? Um, manager. Okay, so I, I'm going to title this as manager because people use different words for this. Um, he, here's the reason why I add a manager, or you can call it, I call them deal hunters or acquisition manager. Okay, the reason why I put a manager folder inside of every property address is because. Sometimes I don't want to share the entire folder with someone on the team, okay? Sometimes, like for example, if I want to share this folder, I just click get shareable link and now it's on and oops, excuse me, now it's on, now I have the link, it's okay, I have the link there, I can send this, but now it's going to send this entire folder right here, this this folder only. One, two, three, Main Street. Okay, I got the share. Oh, excuse me. I got the shareable link right there. Okay, by get shareable link. And now I'm sharing the whole entire folder. But let's say I don't want someone to see the entire folder. Let's say I just want someone to see pics and videos. Right? If I just want someone to see the pics and videos, which is very common in our industry, I want to show you something that's very important. When you click into pics and videos, I do not want you should not do this. Share and then add their email. Do not do this practice. It happens all the time. It happens not only with Google Drive, it also happens with Dropbox, it happens with OneDrive. Do not add an email into your cloud account. Don't add anyone else's email unless they're a close business partner to this. So if you're if you need a link, okay, to send to your cash buyers, you do not add in all the cash buyers email addresses and do that because it's going to as soon as they get the request, it's going to say request access asking for permission. Okay, you don't want that. You want to use the links that they give you, such as this feature right here. You can edit the link access. Anyone can uh, edit the link. That means anyone can edit those videos and pictures. They can delete them. They can add to it if they wanted to. Anyone with the link can view. So that changes the link. You can copy it that way. Okay. However, a simple fix to that is you just put get shareable link. Okay. So and it says right here, anyone with the link can view. You can also change those settings right in here. Okay. It's a quick way of getting the link. Okay, is get the shareable link rather than going to this screen right here and then adding people's emails. Okay, you don't want to add people's. This happens all the time when I'm dealing with investors. I owe, I'm like, yeah, send me the property details. They send me a link requesting access all the time. You don't want to do that. Okay, all right. Now another quick tip. 
um, is when you're dealing with property addresses, like let's say we have multiple properties in North Carolina, okay? We do not color coordinate each property, okay? Each property address. We just keep, because it's based on address, so we don't color coordinate those. However, we would color coordinate folders. Again, color coordination is really important. Whoops. Color coordination can be very important. So North Carolina for us tends to be blue. We, uh, we can do Uganda as red. We can do Azores as green. Okay, again, this is all related to something, all right? If you want to do it that way. If you just wanted to do, hey, green always means a closing, uh, red always means pending or something, whatever it is for you. That way your eyes and mind can be trained to those colors, okay? Um, but this is the way I do it because I like to separate based on uh, either location because I got multiple locations going on. And then when I'm inside of a folder, I'll break it down by colors as well. So do do the color thing, color coordination, what's right for you. Uh, choose your color and choose the way you're going to color coordinate. Just incorporate the color coordination because, again, it helps with speed, it helps with speed. Long term, this is really going to help you out. Okay, so I'm going to just jump back into the North Carolina one. We have you know two properties. We got act, uh, actives that are going on. We got pending deals. We got our closed deals. Every time a deal closes, by the way, so let's say we're done with 456 Main Road. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the share and I'm, I, what I always do – hold on one second – is uh where is that oh it's because it's not a shared folder i'm sorry hold on let me turn it on what i go to is i go to share and and i turn it off okay link ship okay link sharing off private not shared i turn it off because what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take uh, that means anyone who had access to that link anyone who has that link still in an email if they click on it three weeks from now uh, three years from now it's off. They can't get anywhere. They can't get back into it. Okay, that's really important. So what I'll do after it's closed, I'll take that address and I'll throw it right into closed. And then it's gone. And in the future, if I ever want to look at all the deals I've closed, they're there. Okay. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, uh, I've only actually started incorporating this up until Google Drive came out. You know, I mean, I think about all the other deals I've ever done, never had it digitalized. Everything was in paperwork and everything was you know, filed in boxes, kind of with the same concept. I didn't do color coordinating back then, but I definitely had, you know, the the, the millennial, millennial, bleh, manila folders with the tags and everything had, you know, everything was by state for me at the time because I was just investing in the United States. So everything was labeled by state. Then within that folder, I would have actives, pending, contractors and all that and so forth. And so really, really important in, in to, to break it down that way. Now, you're probably thinking, Nathan, I don't have the time to set this all up. Nathan, what? I already started. Nathan, I, I've already been doing real estate for a while. I've closed all the deals. I don't want to go back and do it. Listen, let me give you some tips here. Even if you've already started, if you haven't started your real estate business yet, or maybe you're just getting started, your first, second, or third deal, great. This is a great time to get started and implement this stuff. Um, if you've already been doing deals for a while, you want to start taking action on this moving forward. Uh, even though it takes a little bit of time setting up in the beginning, after a while, it's going to become commonplace. It's going to be just like a common step that you do. What what tends to happen? Hey, let me get me let me get let me get off here for a second. What tends to happen to a lot of folks is they get so wrapped up in downloading files and organizing files and uh, excuse me, they get so involved in downloading stuff that they never organize it. For example, let me give you a personal example. Um, every month. I, at the end of the month, I go through my download uh, folder in, on my computer, okay? And I literally move, whether it's a picture, I move it over to photos. If it's a movie, I move it over to movies. If it's a document, I move it to that certain folder, right? So uh, if it's a software I downloaded, I move it or I delete it, right? So every month, I actually go through my download folder and I sift and sort what's in there. Because your download folder can become the junk drawer of your computer. <laughs> it literally can. And then you start searching for stuff. You're like, where is that document? And where did it go? And that can be so time consuming. Imagine you just have a desk full of papers and sticky notes everywhere. And you're like, where is that? 
Where is it? How can I get to it again? And that can just be so overwhelming that it's and so time consuming that it's not benefiting you at all. It's just wasting your time. Okay. So what you do is you start right away. Every time you download something, you organize it right away. Every time you get a new document, you put it in the right folder right away. I'm gonna show you something um, really important here. Well, kind of. But every time, you might, if you use Gmail already, this kind of automatically happens. When you use Gmail and you get an email from someone, if there's attachments at the bottom, sorry, I don't have any attachments here right now, but when there's an attachment and you receive it, there's this little there's this little icon that says save all full uh, attachments to Google Drive. So for example, so here we have I sent I sent my daughter a picture. Okay, so you see down here, see this part right here? Look at that. See how it says download and then save to drive? So you may get contracts in and then all of a sudden it says organize right away open it up <laughs> right and let's say i want to add i want to put this in a, a new folder i'm going to put personal whatever it is i'm just again i'm just making up folders right now and i'm going to move it there immediately i just organized that particular file it could be a contract let's say i i want to uh i wanted to move that into a certain property let's say this was um, I'm going to move this item. Let's say it was a contract for a property. I'm going to go into it and I'm going to add it to that property. Okay. And I'm going to move it here, move it into the contracts. Bam. Done. Just moved it. That's it. Now, guess what? Bloop. Delete. Don't need the email anymore because when I go into Google Drive, give it one second, it will populate right here. That, that folder, let me just refresh to speed up time. I don't wanna wait for it. Okay, so, that, well that's the, that's the image, right? So if I go into real estate, North Carolina, I know, I think I just put it in contracts, right? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, so there it is, right? So now it's organized. It's organized right away, right from email into my Google Drive, because I needed to save it that way. Does that make sense? You understand? This is super helpful for a lot of different reasons. All right, one last feature I'm gonna show you that happens all the time when you are having pictures taken of your properties, okay? Whenever you have pictures going on in your properties, you have the address of the property, okay? Let's jump in there, pics and videos. All right, now, someone can send you the pictures and videos, all right? They can send you in an email and you can attach them all. You can also have them do this, can edit, and you copy it, and then when they get that link, they can actually upload right into this folder. Okay, that's another way. It's, all, it's, it's another way of like them uploading the images to your folder, okay? Really uh, cool feature as well. So you can do it either way, all right? Okay, so those are some simple strategies of organizing your folders, your email, that was primarily what we were covering today, folders uh, and email, and I hope this has been super beneficial to you.